Non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drugs are a class of paralytic medications commonly used in anesthesia. More specifically, these drugs work by competitively blocking postsynaptic acetylcholine receptors at the neuromuscular junction. In this video, I'll give you my visual mnemonic to help you remember all the important information about non-depolarizing neuromuscular blocking drugs. Let's jump into the scene. This scientist has gone mad. That is, mad with joy because she's found this cure after years of hard work. By the way, this cure should help you remember that this video is about the curare derivatives. You know, since these drugs literally have cure in their name. I'm talking about rocuronium, pancuronium, atracurium, mivacurium, tubocurarine, and vecuronium. As a side note, curare is a paralytic poison found in plants and frogs in South America, and native people used it to coat their arrow tips for hunting and warfare. Now we use derivatives of this same curare for medical paralysis. Just remember cure for curare derivatives. Got that? But what exactly was this mad scientist trying to cure? Well, obviously it was paralysis, of course. Apparently, this scientist's spouse became paralyzed several years back, and this scientist has been working tirelessly since to find a cure. Coincidentally, the apparent paralysis displayed by the husband here should help you remember that non-depolarizing neuromuscular junction blockers are used for muscular paralysis, particularly in the context of general anesthesia. Not only does this keep the patient from moving during surgery, it also paralyzes all those pesky muscles responsible for the gag reflex, which prevents aspiration on vomit when you put a breathing tube down someone's throat. Just a clinical pearl for good measure. Next, if you've ever worked in a science lab, you would know that one thing you can't do is to smoke. Think about all of those flammable materials, and this lab is no different. Just look at that no smoking sign in the back. I like to use this no smoking sign to remind me that the non-depolarizing neuromuscular junction blockers act by blocking nicotinic receptors. These receptors are found postsynaptically and normally respond to acetylcholine binding by opening ion channels to cause depolarization. The curare derivatives block these receptors, preventing depolarization, which is why they're called non-depolarizing paralytics. Since your muscles use short depolarizations to contract, no depolarization means no muscle contraction or paralysis. Contrast this mechanism against that of the depolarizing paralytics like succinylcholine, which induce paralysis by continuously depolarizing the motor end plate, therefore making it unresponsive to further nerve impulses. And any person who does lab work knows how important it is to keep an organized bench. Just look at those four graduated cylinders, arranged perfectly from largest to smallest. By the way, this arrangement of four cylinders progressively decreasing in size should help you remember a high-yield characteristic for the non-depolarizing paralytics. Progressive reduction on train of four stimulation. What do I mean here? Well, anesthesiologists assess the degree of paralysis by electrically stimulating a muscle. They do this by administering a series of four electric shocks to the muscle, also called a train of four. And here comes the kicker. Non-depolarizing blockade drugs show a progressive decrease or progressive reduction in muscular response when repetitively stimulated. The actual mechanism behind this fade is complicated. So just remember how our neurotic scientist arranged her cylinders from tallest to shortest to peg progressive reduction on train of four stimulation. Again, this is high yield and you can be asked to differentiate between depolarizing and non-depolarizing agents using the train of force stimulation pattern. Make sure to watch our other video on depolarizing paralytics to see how train of four differs there. Poor scientist. It looks like she's been working through the night on her research. Where's the light in this place? Oh, it's coming from that neon sign in the back near the entrance. And it looks like a visitor stopped by at the wrong time. Look at him, backing away from the door. Maybe he got scared by the authorized personnel only sign or the ravings of the mad scientist. I like to use this visitor reversing his way out of here after looking at that neon sign above to remember that the effects of these non-depolarizing NMJ blockers can be reversed with neostigmine. A neon sign for neostigmine 
and backing away for reversal. Get it? On a clinical note, you'll often see neostigmine given at the end of anesthesia, right when you want to end the paralysis. I mean, I don't blame that guy for reversing his way out of there. What kind of student would want to work with someone who never leaves their lab? Just look inside. Is that a blow-up mattress on the floor? Seems like this mad scientist has been trying to find a cure for a while. That mattress looks almost completely deflated. By the way, this deflated mattress helps me remember that hypotension is an adverse effect of the non-depolarizing neuromuscular junction blockers. Is that a broken fan on the ceiling? I can only imagine what those hot summer days must be like in a lab without a fan. Now that I think about it, this broken fan helps me remember that respiratory depression is another potential adverse effect of these medications. All right, I think it's about time we let this mad scientist use that cure she's been working so hard to discover. Let's recap before we head out. The non-depolarizing neuromuscular junction blockers, like atracurium and rocuronium, are curare derivatives used in anesthesia for paralysis during surgery. These agents act by competitively blocking nicotinic receptors postsynaptically at the neuromuscular junction. This prevents depolarization and inhibits muscle contraction. Train of force stimulation will show progressive reduction of muscle response. Neostigmine is the drug of choice to reverse these agents. And don't forget that hypotension and respiratory depression is seen as possible side effects. And with that, we're done here. I hope this video didn't leave you unable to move. Until next time. Thanks for watching. For more videos like this one, click here to subscribe to our YouTube channel. You can also support our team by visiting pixarize.com, where you'll find exclusive videos and interactive review images. If you like what we're doing, share with your friends on social media, and we'll keep making great content like this. We'll see you next time.